Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see the review of Vincenzo episode 5 and 6. I have already posted the review of episode 1 and 2, 3 and 4 and the trailer of Vincenzo in my previous videos. I have given the link below. Please do check out if you have not checked out. A quick recap of the story so far. Vincenzo is a consulary to an Italian mafia boss. After the death of his boss, he goes to Korea to take the goal left hidden by the Chinese mafia boss under the Gumgum Plaza. At the death of the Chinese mafia boss, Vincenzo and the dummy Korean owner Mr. Choi decide to take the goal for themselves. 70% for Vincenzo and the rest 30% for Mr. Choi. Coming to Babel Pharmaceutical Company, it is one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies that is headed by a dummy chairman Han Xiu. Another law firm, namely Wusang Law Firm, helps Babel Group cover up their crimes. Babel Group plans to bring a drug RDU-40 into the market under the pretense of painkiller in spite of it having narcotic substance Cosain. Babel Group tries it on a bunch of volunteers and they die instantly after the drug is injected into them. Meanwhile, the researchers of Babel Group who are aware of the drug are kept in quarantine in Babel guest house and one of them escapes and gives the details to the human rights lawyer Yu Chan. Meanwhile, Babel Group illegally buys Gyumgyam Plaza from Mr. Choi and the tenants are forced to wick it. One of the tenants, Yu Chan, the human rights lawyer and the father of the heroine and the whistleblower researcher of Babel get killed in an attempt to bring the Babel Group down. The heroine who previously represented Babel Group from Musang Law Firm resigns her job and vows to take revenge for her father's death as well as the death of the volunteers. Along with Vincenzo and the victim's family set the raw material warehouse of Babel Group on fire and that's when the real chairman of Babel Group, Jun Wu, the intern at Musang Law Firm, is revealed. Wu is the intern at Wusong Law Firm who worked under Cha Yang, the heroine. Lawyer Mungi joins Wusong Law Firm and she is determined to find out more about Vincenzo. She is determined to talk to Vincenzo but he downplays it by faking his voice but Mungi is still suspicious. So she places a bug to overhear the conversation between Vincenzo and Cha Yang at her father's law firm. Vincenzo is proactive and senses the same and destroys the bug. The gist is that RDU-90 is not Babel's only dangerous product embroiled in lawsuit. Babel Chemicals is developing a new product and several researchers exposed to it have died of leukemia. Vincenzo and Cha Yang discuss their next steps over the drink. He is determined to beat Babel in court, but he is not licensed to practice in Korea, so Cha Yang will have to be their official lawyer. Insider Cha Yang decides targeting Bab Babel chemicals is their best shot. One of the monks at Gyunga Plaza has a meal with his longtime friend who happens to be a Babel chemicals employee. And so meets fake chairman Jung in the gym and on the first interaction, like Mungi, Vincenzo finds out that he is a fake chairman. Vincenzo strokes his ego by dropping businessman's name to test him to which the fake chairman is clueless. Chairman Jung publicly announces the release of Babel Chemicals' new product BLST, a substance that will be used in display panels. As he shakes the researcher's hands, Mong's friend starts to cough and grabs his chest. When Chairman Jung reaches him, the young researcher coughs and sprays blood all over Chairman Jung's face. Jung freaks out and demands they call the hospital for him, entirely ignoring the unconscious Mong's friend who collapsed. When Jung is escorted back, one of the researchers lowers beside the collapsed researcher and whispers to him that they won't call the hospital until he signs. The monk rushes to the hospital to see his friend Wu, where the doctor tells him that his friend has leukemia. Since the doctor is one of the Babel's people, he attributes the illness to genetics or Wu's behaviors like smoking and not following Babel's safety protocols. There is an entire network involved in this. The victim's lawyer is working with Wu Sang to convince the victims to settle. Babel owns the hospital that gives out fake diagnosis to the victims and has the newspaper Dae Chang Daily in their pocket. Cha Yang and Vincenzo stop by Wusong Law Firm to announce they, that they are now representing the Babel victims. 
done hiding his identity, Vincenzo does not disguise his voice and makes sure that Moong Hee knows he was the one who threatened her by repeating the phrase that he used on the phone with her. To the international agencies, Director Tay is angry at the team leader Anne for his extracurricular spy activities, but after scolding him, he hands him two files, requests from both Babel and Busan for a background check on Vincenzo. Team leader Anne promises to handle the request personally. Wu Sang, Jan Wu looks over the detailed report of Vincenzo to find only his charity works being highlighted. Team leader Han further highlighted Vincenzo as a human rights lawyer and a philanthropist who has got death threats for his legal protection of mafia victims. If they come together, Vincenzo, Cha Yang, Yu Chan's assistant, and the tenants of Gungam Plaza all join together to fight against Mighty Babel. They cannot win over the Babel group. Vincenzo and Cha Yang come up with various plans to make the case draw instead of focusing on winning. Moong Hee and manager Han of Wu Sang Law Firm bribe the judge to get the case in their favor and Cha Yang come up with various acts right from water pipe leaking, the electricity being cut and finally releasing some hornets into the court that stings the judge. The judge unable to pay, take the pain any further adjoins the case by a week. Wunsa, Wu Sang law firm can't believe they were beaten by such a ridiculous tactics when they are experts in playing dirty. The tenants go out to eat to celebrate their first case hearing being adjoined. Everyone is startled to find Gilbert, a homeless guy who hangs out nearby, peeking in the window. He enters the restaurant and asks for food in exchange for an important information that could change their lives. He tells them about the gold hidden underground in Gumgam Plaza and also produces the proof for the sale. Team heads to brief the chairman Jiang, while Cha Yang and Vincenzo prepare the plaintiffs for their testimony and questioning on the stand. Vincenzo estimates a 40% chance of winning. Their next steps are finding a doctor who will testify for them against Babel's witnesses. He throws a fit and announces to change of plans. Next thing we know is the treasurer of the victim group gets knocked out and a bunch of money is stashed in the scaling tiles. At the hospital, the Babel doctor puts something in Mong's friend Wu's IV drips. There's no way the victims can testify as witnesses. Their only hope was Mong's friend Wu. That might be a bust since Jiang Su calls them and tells them about Wu Yang being investigated because they found traces of illicit drugs in his system. Episode we come to know that the eldest son, intern Zhong Wu, was born to the chairman's wife, but a second son, Han Se, was born to his secretary, who is the dummy chairman of Babel Group. All the witness out of play, Wu Sang Law Firm has regained their confidence in the second trial. Doctor testifies that the plaintiff's claims are all lies and puts the blame on the researcher's own bad health. When it is Cha Yang's turn, she surprises Wu Sang and Judge Hyo by announcing a last-minute witness. Aha! Here comes the twist in the story. Vincenzo walks in accompanied by a police officer who removes handcuffs from his wrist. He smiles at the gaping Wu Sang lawyers and takes his place at the front of the courtroom. The end of episode 6. Now coming to what I liked about this episodes 5 and 6. Vincenzo and Cha Yang make a great team. They both are determined, unorthodox and unafraid to break the rules when necessary. Not only do they complement and read, read each other well, but they are clearly getting attached. Some clearly romantic vibes between them in this hour, which I know had to be coming. Whenever a man and a woman in a drama bicker that much, they must fall in love. Yes, that's the basic rule in K-drama land. On one hand, Vincenzo is looking less excited about his plan to get the gold and split these days between potentially falling for Cha Yang and getting more involved with the tenants who are starting to accept him as one of the family. He seems to be putting down more roots on that than he intended. Then there is an unresolved situation with his mother. Speaking of parents, that meeting between Vincenzo and 
क्यों जा वो स्टेंस दे लेफ्ट सो मच अनसेट बट इट डज सेम शी नोज हु इज आई एम ग्लैड ही विजिटेड हर इफ ओनली बिकॉज हिज फीलिंग सराउंडिंग बींग अबैंडेंड बाय हर क्लियरली हैवेंट बीन रिसॉल्ट आई आई डो पिटी हर फॉर बींग फॉल्सली अक्यूज एंड सफरिंग सो मच शी शुड हैव फाइल फॉर अ रीट्रायल बट चूज चूजेस टू लिव आउट her sentence and punish herself i can understand vincenzo's conflicted feelings in watching his mother who abandoned him living such a pitiful life right now now although everything is focused on the second babel case even though i am sure vincenzo has something planned up his sleeve on the trial babel has enough power and support to turn almost everything around one lawsuit isn't going to break them if vincenzo stays for longer and keeps fighting with babel his mafia boss is bound to haunt him although with how much vincenzo mentions the mafia he is not exactly hiding his association i initially thought team leader han would be the one to reveal vincenzo's past but now that he is vincenzo's fan he might actually prove to be an asset rather than a liability Looks like Jun Hu and Moong Hee both would jump at a chance to take down Vincenzo. The way Jun Hu switches between persons is frightening. I am wondering if his puppy dog inside is entirely fake or is he sort of blend of his two identities. It's not safe to say that he is thus genuinely like Cha Yang and given his continued attempts to get her away from Babel case and how he isn't doing anything despite knowing she had something to do with the fire. I don't think so that will stop him from hurting Cha Yang if he can't find another way out but he does seem to be looking for a way to let her off the hook if possible. Now that she and Vincenzo are going head to head with Babel in court that's going to be a bit harder. As of now, Vincenzo is a great schemer and Cha Yang a shameless performer which make all this work. That's all in this video. Did you see Vincenzo? Who was your favorite character? Please leave your reply in the comment section. If you like this video, please do share with your friends and family. Thank you for your continuous support. Please please click on like and subscribe to find out if I will review one of your favorite dramas in the next episode. I will be back soon with another video. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.